but the ideas here come out of um, really three sets of experiences of mine. So one is um, uh, arguments uh, with left-wingers, and, and they're, they're U.S. experiences. I don't have these experiences with people outside the U.S. Um, but one is uh, left-wingers who advocate strongly for more equality within the public schools, um, but somehow resist applying those standards to private schools. They say, no, that's the private sector. You can't do anything to the private sector. And I want to say, no, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's just rich people spending money. I mean, it's the, like, w we can do stuff to that. Um, the second is uh, arguments with left-wingers in the U.S. who are opposed, and this is really people in my neighborhood. I'm, I, I try not to be rude. Um, who are very opposed to a school voucher system uh, that is in place in Milwaukee, which is a local city, uh, city local to us, um, which funds, it targets low-income children who are in uh, pretty bad schools, and it uh, pays for them, the government pays for those kids to go to private schools based on the choice of parents. Everybody in my neighborhood opposes that scheme, except me. I, I, I actually oppose it now, too, but, but everybody, uh, until recently, I didn't. Um, they changed it. Uh, but everyone opposes it. But everybody in my neighborhood bought their house in my neighborhood because uh, the local government schools are uh, the best local government schools uh, in the city. So they used their privilege of choice through the housing market. Um, uh, but they don't want poor black and Latino people being able to use um, the choice that the government uh, is willing to give them um, uh, through just choosing schools. Uh, I get very uncomfortable with that. Um, uh, and the final thing, and I'll come back to this in a minute, is uh, the difficulty that people have in deciding whether charter schools, so I'll describe charter schools in a moment, but deciding whether charter schools is a special kind of school that are run by non-profits and sometimes by profit, for, for profits, um, but mildly regulated and paid for um, entirely by the government. Um, uh, deciding whether those charter schools are public schools or private schools. Often what people do is they just call them charter schools uh, to avoid it. Um, and I, I guess my, you know, the payoff is I don't care whether they're private schools or public schools. It just doesn't matter to me whether they're public or private. Um, what matters to me is what contribution they make uh, to, uh, the, to achieving the goals, the public goals that we should have uh, for the system. So here's the standard way I think that people, um, certainly uh, in the UK and the US, or certainly in the US, make uh, uh, between public and private schools. They think, well, public schools are government funded, government provided, and the government decides what students go to which schools. Um, whereas with private schools, they're privately funded, uh, usually by parental, uh, by, by tuition, um, uh, privately provided, uh, there's a private provider, um, which isn't the government, and they have full discretion on admissions. They can let anybody they want in, um, and they can rule anybody they want out. Now, of course, already uh, you will see that the public, um, uh, the public defi the, this definition of the public is already a bit uncomfortable because the government sort of allocates students to public schools, but it sort of doesn't, right? What the government doesn't do is say, it doesn't matter where you live, your kid is going to go to the school we tell you it's going to go to. What the government does is it says, if you can buy a house in the neighborhood which has the best uh, public schools in the city, uh, then you get to go there. And if you can't afford a house, or if you're, um, you're, you're renting and your uh, landlord kicks you out, um, uh, then... Then we decide where your ki kids go to school. We decide. But for upper middle class and middle class parents, they get to decide where their kids go to school within this framework that we've set up. Um, okay. Don't worry about that. Oh, that's just going to happen all the time. Um, so there are some uh, unclear cases, and there always have been unclear cases. In, uh, the voucher schools that I mentioned are unclear cases with the distinction I've just given. Um, Direct grant schools, those are schools that we no longer have in the UK, but um, I, I, I'm, I've lived in the UK and the US, so I sort of jumped back and forth. Um, direct grant schools were schools which were privately run, but they got direct grants. Uh, some kids went um, because their parents paid the fees, uh, but some kids passed um, exams 
and the government would pay for them. Uh, and the government would pay for them regardless of whether the parents could afford the fees or not. If you passed the exams, you got to go, um, and if you uh, didn't pass the exams, you got to go if, uh, if, if your parents could pay. Uh, assisted places scheme was very similar. Almost all Dutch schools don't fit this. Uh, in the Netherlands, um, uh, something like 87% of children attend schools which are run by private foundations, um, but paid for with government money. Um, and regulated actually quite stringently by the government in terms of the kinds of uh, curriculum they have. Um, so already we've got unclear cases. If you're going to say that this is a public school and you're not going to say that um, Sally James is a public... Was it Sally James? CLA? Uh, Sally James is a public school. I don't think public has any normative significance for you at all. Um, so what you could do is you could add some criteria. Uh, you can say, well, population has to reflect the diversity of the community in order for it to be public. Or population has to reflect the socioeconomic diversity of the region. Because obviously, if it just reflects the socioeconomic diversity of the community, and the community is not very socioeconomically diverse, as, again, in the US, most communities are not. So most districts um, uh, are um, either very high poverty or very low poverty. It's very hard to find a school district like mine. I mean, the school district I'm in has about a 40% poverty rate, which is roughly the poverty, of, it's probably about 30% in the country as a whole. Um, but almost no school districts have populations like that. Most school districts have populations of 10% poverty or less and of 80% uh, poverty or more. Why? Because we're a highly segregated, the housing is highly segregated in our society. There's nothing that schools and school districts can do about that. Um, it's a fact that they have to live with, but it means um, that any given school that just uh, reflects the socioeconomic diversity of the community um, is uh, not gonna be public in a sense that I'd want it to be public if I were trying to add in these criteria. All right. So we could have these criteria. Are, are there six? Yes, there are. So I don't need to go any further. Good. Um, government provided, government funded, no religion. Very important for Americans, not for me, that um, a school has no religion in it in order for it to be public. They do not like the idea that you'd have religion in a school and you'd fund it. Me, I'm perfectly happy to have the government fund religious schools as long as it holds them to all sorts of... Uh, regulation um, or that it chooses them wisely um, I don't have a problem with that but but that's that makes me un-American um, everybody doesn't want religion in public schools even pe people who like religious schools don't want religion in public schools people who like public schools don't want religion in public schools no discretion over admissions reflects diversity is equally good for all demographic groups. So let's, uh, so just to say that last condition. So you might have a pretty representative school. Um, and actually my children, uh, my eldest has just graduated from high school and she attended a school, um, a high school which was about 40% free and reduced lunch. Um, so you might think, well, you know, at least Brighouse, good old Brighouse, he sends his kid to a representative school, you know. Um, no. That's not true. It's a school which neglects the education of the 40% of kids who are on free and reduced lunch. Those kids are at the school, sure, um, but they're assigned the least good teachers. They're assigned the most inexperienced teachers. Um, they're not in the same classes uh, as uh, the kids who... Um, they're not in the same classes as, as the more advantaged kids. You should have heard when uh, there was a proposal to make ninth grade English um, uh, a class that everybody should take. You should have heard the Obama voting um, left-wing liberal uh, um, upper-middle-class uh, parents around my uh, um, area and how much they fussed. No, we can't have ninth grade English be a... Uh, we need electives. We need Shakespeare, because if you have Shakespeare, then your kid can choose into Shakespeare, and you know the poor kids won't choose into Shakespeare, and then you get to have your kid not be in classes with the poor kids, um, but you don't have to admit that what you're doing is segregating. Why isn't no discretion over admissions reflects diversity equally good for all demographic groups enough? Why do we need government-provided, government-funded, uh, uh, and uh, let's forget about no religion? Um... Uh, I, th I think that it seems fetishistic to insist on any of the other criteria once you have those three criteria in place. Once you've got um, uh, no discretion over emissions and diversity and it being equally good for everybody, um, I, I don't care 
I don't care about the rest of the stuff. And I think caring about the rest of the stuff would seem odd. Here, I think we want all of these things from a, from a, a schooling system. We want it to produce a productive labor force. And by productive labor force, I do not mean you know, people who sit there making widgets and do whatever they're told by employers. Um, I mean people who produce social good. Some uh, widget producing is uh, social bad. Um, uh, um, and some activity that doesn't get paid at all is social good. Um, I, lots of people contribute to uh, productivity without um, ever getting paid for doing so. I don't just mean the people who work for employers who don't pay them, although there's them too. Um, we want democratically competent citizens, people who are capable um, uh, t of participating generously in political and civic life. We want people who can make their own judgments, who are not bound by the judgments, by the, by the, by the way that their parents or their communities think of things, um, but are able to make judgments on their own about how to live their lives and about what's valuable. And we want a system, I think this is really important, we want a system that, is, that contributes to social justice in the right kind of way. And uh, the, the, my, I have written like lots of things about this, and so, but four words are good enough, really. Um, it benefits the less advantaged. It prior, okay, five words. It prioritizes benefit of the less advantaged. Um, so that's, I think, what we should want from a schooling system. Um, and then I think what we, we should do is we should think of all schools as public schools. They're all obliged to play a coordinated role in a system that provides what we want from a school system. And any school that fails to make uh, an appropriate contribution is a failing school, whether it's traditionally called public, traditionally called private, whatever criteria it meets. If it doesn't do this, it's not a failing school. Now, I envisage a system which has some diversity of provision, because uh, if every school were exactly the same, uh, I don't think that schools would be able to do a really good job of um, co uh, contributing to this system. Um, I, I expect diversity of uh, um, provision because I think you need diversity in, to, in order to spark innovation, in order to get the dissemination of good practices, uh, etc. Um, I have no idea what this... Uh, uh, yeah, so, okay, so you might say all schools are public schools, or you might say... Uh, whether a school is public or private is not the interesting issue. It's how well it serves the public purposes for education. That's what we want to be focused on. Now, I'm not denying that there are private purposes, that there are private interests at stake. There are private interests at stake, and they're important. Um, children and parents have an interest in schools not disrupting their relationships, their familial relationships. They have an interest in, uh, parents have an interest in sharing values with their children. Schools that try to take children away from their parents culturally um, are doing something prima facie wrong. If their parents are, you know, uh, Nazis in the Ku Klux Klan, then maybe it's doing the right thing. But there is a bad thing going along with the right thing it's doing. By and large, it's doing the wrong thing. Um, uh, and children have interests in being educated and becoming independent, which are private interests. You know, they have a private interest that, as well as uh, the public having an interest. Um, but that doesn't make any difference to the private-public uh, divide. Um, because, first of all, many of children's private interests are included in the way that I've defined the public interests, uh, purposes of education. And the other is that these interests, these private interests, are as urgent among those who cannot afford private schooling as they are among us, uh, those who can afford private schooling. In fact, by and large, they're more urgent for those who can't afford private schooling than they are for those who can, can't, can afford private schooling, right? Because people who can't afford private schooling, by and large, are more vulnerable to various kinds of bad things happening to their private interests than people who can afford private schooling. Um, uh, and so I don't think that... I, I think private interests have to be attended to properly by uh, all schools, um, but public and private. OK, so I'm going to finish with my concluding comment. I, don't, can't, I can't remember what it is, but I know it'll be interesting. Um, no, it isn't really. All schools are obliged to serve public legitimate purposes. Uh, all schools are obliged to serve legitimate private purposes. Um, and that's without regard to who funds, regulates, or chooses them. Uh, so I want to focus on what schools do, on uh, whether they contribute appropriately to the public mission, and think hard about that. And whether we call them public or private um, isn't so important. See, at the level of... Uh, mm, uh, sort of principles. If uh, 
public and for-profit market, and I am emphasizing that, for-profit uh, for profit, uh, market-run schools, if both can deliver the same kind of uh, public-spirited education, then who could have a problem with that? Uh, so we would all happily agree. Then what are we really discussing is that if we really think four criteria of education which Professor Brighouse gave us just now, uh, people who can make their own judgment, who, are, uh, who participate generously in the democratic uh, citizenship, who are critical, I have forgotten that, but uh, if we think that the private education can deliver that and we can make through the regulation private education, private schools to deliver that, then perhaps there is no contradiction, there is no problem, there is no debate. The real issue is in under what kind of market and social and political conditions uh, a private school running for profit can deliver those goods. And the problem is here that so far uh, the way these uh, regulations from the government, the way the schools have been running world over, they do not see that promise that they are concerned with those values and that they are uh, um, uh, delivered. But then another argument emerges, but are the public schools, so-called government schools, do deliver that? May not be. But then the government is duty bound in a democratic state to deliver that. So what should we be doing in a country like India? Should we be simply saying, since government doesn't deliver, uh, private doesn't deliver, therefore it's okay, or should we be saying that this is the duty of the government, first they should deliver in their own system, and if they can regulate, then they should regulate in the, in the, in the private, or they should check this private thing. Because otherwise, this argument gives a license to a government which gets out of its responsibility uh, into privatizing education. The deep first principles are not going to reflect refer directly to institutions. They're not going to refer directly to institutional forms. Um, uh, you find the principles and then you look at institutional forms and you ask uh, how, how likely those institutional forms are, are to serve the principles. I mean, that's what I do. Again, it's maybe a matter of preference, you know. Um, and yes, yeah, some in institutional forms are going to be better and some institutional forms are going to be worse. And I, I want to have that argument. Um, uh, but I also want to be very clear that, you know, governments don't always do these things well either. My advice is don't give away the house. I don't know what my advice is because I don't know what the bright metaphor is. But, you know, my advice is no. Once you give things over to the private sector, it's really, really hard to get them back. Um, and so just from a pragmatic point of view, uh, the private sector in, lots of, in, lots of, in, in service of lots of public goods, even if you think it would be better right now than the government, uh, should be resisted because um, uh, once you've given it away to them, the government is never going to develop the competencies. Or if it does try to develop the competencies, uh, the private sector is going to lobby to try and prevent it from doing so.